you can have a carrot if you wake up. Look, right there. I got the uh, the loser edition of this The Satisfaction album, but I feel like a winner. <laughs> Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. Time for a review, Jack White, Blunderbuss. Jack White is a Detroit singer-songwriter, Detroit originating singer-songwriter. He currently operates out of Nashville, Tennessee. And between his record label, Third Man Records, and all of the artists he's collaborated with over the years, released records for over the years, and celebrities too, not to mention the numerous bands he's been in, this guy has a nice little musical empire for himself. And it's all fueled by his great songwriting and strong guitar playing and his love for, for blues rock and garage rock, gospel and soul, and, and vinyl records. Now, I know Jack best as one half of the White Stripes. I assume that's how most people know him best. With the very bright and rich guitar leads that were all over those White Stripes records with huge, huge guitar chords just smothered in distortion, as well as some really fat, husky drum beats coming from, from Meg White. It was hard not to feel like they were simultaneously saving old school rock and roll, but also presenting something completely new. After the fantastic album Elephant, though, I kind of fell off the wagon with the White Stripes between Get Behind Me Satan, The Rat Count Tours, The Dead Weather. Jack was just not making music that I cared for. But this new LP, new solo LP, is a little bit of a return to form that I think a lot of fans and rock writers who have followed Jack for a long time are going to enjoy. Tracks like I'm Shaken and 16 Saltines will most definitely appeal to an old school White Stripes fan who really loved the harder side of the duo. 16 Saltines has these booming, tough ass drums and these amplifier on fire guitar chords that just make me wish I had really long hair so that I could throw it around in every direction as I do this. And the track I'm Shaken is, is really tough as well, but has a huge gospel trip going on, especially on the vocal breaks between the guitar parts when Jack is singing. It sounds like it could have been a White Stripe song, but it is fleshed out with these very dazzling female background singers. It's, it's a nice touch. And that's another thing that may appeal to people about this album, hearing Jack White's usual songwriting style completely unadulterated in the way that it would be in the White Stripes, but fleshed out a little bit more with extra instrumentation, whether it be synthesizer, organ, electric piano, some saloon piano, background singers, some pedal steel as well. The song On and On and On has this really elegant string introduction on it, and the song Take Me With You has this very Dave Brubeck Take 5 piano groove going on. I love love the jazzy woodwinds on the track Love Interruption, one of the first singles from this album. And of course Jack continues evolving his more experimental guitar sounds, like on the track Weep Themselves to Sleep. On the bridge there are these dueling guitar solos in the left and right channels, but they both sound like they're being played out of these busted, glitchy, stuttering amplifiers, and it has this really disorienting effect that I love. Jack is just a musical madman, and no matter how poppy or just accessible his songs get, you can always look forward to little weird details like that to pop up in his songs. Now, despite some new production sounds on this thing, overall, this album kind of makes me feel like it's 2003 all over again. Spots on Blunderbuss feel so close to moments, and I mean specific moments, on the White Stripe sophomore album, on White Blood Cells, on Elephant. I mean, like, songs. I'm bound to pack it up, 
dead leaves in the dirty ground. I'm finding it hard to be a gentleman. I just want to be the boy to warm your mother's heart. The, 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 the ballads. But it's close to his, his old sound, because, I mean, let's face it, it's not really that old. As close to his old sound as Jack gets on this album, there is still mm, something about it that feels less wild, less free, less exciting, less dangerous, I guess, and, and kind of rehashed like a white stripes chop suey with, you know, the occasional fresh ingredient added here and there just to make it feel different. I would say Jack keeps up his lyrical game, though, by talking about some really strange relationship dynamics, dangerous love interests and infatuations, as well as some characters who just kind of live on the fray, like the girl he's singing about in the track 16 Saltines. And the falsetto vocals on that track just kind of add to the eccentricity of, of the persona being sung about. I love the lyrics on the track Missing Pieces, where Jack is talking about how when someone exits a relationship with you, they essentially take a piece of you with them, but Jack kind of literally talks about, like, missing body parts. Freedom at 21 kind of talks about how because this woman Jack is with has freedom in, in the 21st century because of uh, suffrage, well, it seems that this has made the tables turn, according to Jack, and, and now he is, is suffering physical violence from, from this person he's loving. And of course, the song Love Interruption has pretty much the, the idea, the concept of love being very physical and violent with Jack, and he's he's pretty much welcoming it. Even when I'm not really into the melody of a song or the chord progression or whatever, I can usually rely on Jack to continue to be clever and entertaining with his words, which is great. Jack still manages to, you know, kind of surprise me in that department, but he doesn't really push me or, or much of anything musically on this album. Like I said, there are some extra pieces of instrumentation here and there, but to me it's it's just a little bit of window dressing because a lot of these songs at their core don't have a lot of oomph to them. Like the pedal steel performance on the title track just felt so plain. I kind of feel the same way about the, the, the piano playing on the track Hypocritical Kiss. Because there are more instruments to keep track of, I feel like the, nothing is really being played in a, in a really strong or standout way on a lot of these songs. Same thing with the drumming, the groove, and the monkey on the bed lyrics on the track Trash Tongue Talker, too. I'm not trying to say a good chunk of this album is bad or anything, just very underwhelming. But like I mentioned earlier, some of the extra instrumentation that lands onto this LP does knock it out of the park, like the huge climactic ending on the closing track here. And, and again, those woodwinds on Love Interruption are great. I guess there just weren't enough rockers on, on this album for me, more ballads than I would have liked, but the ballads to me didn't feel especially moving or, or anything like that. Nothing in, in the league of, of, of Apple Blossom. Or I, I think we're gonna be friends. Though a track like Hip, uh, eponymous Poor Boy does come really close. That is a that is a cute and, and pretty heartwarming song. And the track Weep Themselves to Sleep, I, I do love. That piano is so dramatic on that track, and it is a heavy song. I feel like I really can't say too much about this album on the side of positivity without still having these thoughts kind of twittering away in my head, reminding me that, oh yeah, I don't like this part, I don't like this part. I think a lot of the songs toward the end kind of taper off in a really <sighs> kind of way. I feel so on the fence and it aggravates me because I thought this album was gonna be just great. Given the, the first two singles to, to drop from it before the release were, were stellar, in my opinion. Yeah, I know, especially 16 Saltine sounded maybe a little bit too much like old school White Stripes, but the energy is there, and, and that's ultimately what makes it so appealing for me and makes some of these songs kind of unappealing to me. Sometimes the energy, the passion, the fire is there, and sometimes it sort of seems to be fading. But the thing is, you know, I'm not really gonna stress this review or how I feel about this album, and, and neither should you, mostly because even though we've known Jack White for a long time, 
This is his first official solo album. And in a way, I see this as a new beginning for him. The guitar solos, a lot of the songs, the guitar tone, and the lyrics on this thing I think are still really great. Just felt like this could have been so much better, I guess. Kind of feeling a decent to strong six on this thing, but what did you guys think? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? And what should I review next? Anthony Fantano, Jack White, Blunderbuss, forever.